Hey Grade 12s, thought I'd make a quick video on graph work and drawing or sketching cubic graphs. Uh, hashtag get keen, you got this. So the, the cubic graph I've given you or function is that x cubed minus 5x squared minus 8x plus 12. Right, so there are various things we need to find. To find the x-intercepts, make y equal to naught. So naught is equal to the function. Then it's a bit of guesswork. You have to substitute in numbers into there that hopefully give you naught. Right, so the easiest way to do it is to look at 12 and say what factors go into 12. 1, 12, 2, 6, 4, and 3. So I happen to sub in negative 2 and I got 0. That makes x plus 2 a factor of that function. Then our second bracket is what is left, right? So x times what gives you back to x cubed? x squared. 2 times what gives you back to 12? 6. That middle term is the difficult term, and I'll do it this way. 2 times the x is 2x squared, but we need to get to negative 5x squared. So that x there times this piece there must give us negative 7x squared in order for the 2x squared and the negative 7x squared to land me back with negative 5x squared. Okay? That bracket can then further factorize using quadratic trinomial x minus 6, x minus 1, and there are my three x-intercepts. The y-intercepts are a bit easier. If I make x naught, that all falls away, and 12, so naught and 12, is my y-intercept. To find the turning points, or the stationary points, we must make the first derivative over there equal to naught. So the first derivative is 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. Hopefully you can see that. The 3 comes to the front and gets reduced by 1, 3x squared. 5 times the 2 is negative 10, and an x and minus 8. There we go. We quadratic trinomial that and we get those brackets making x negative 2 over 3 or x equals 4. At this stage, please sub in those x values into the original function. So there it is. I've subbed it back into the original function. Quite a step like that. And I got 14,81 when I subbed in negative 2 over 3. And when I subbed in 4, I got negative 36. So we've got our two turning points. Now we go to our graph and I've drawn it there already. There are my x-intercepts, negative 2, 1, and 6. There's my turning point, negative 2 thirds and 14,81. And there is my other one, 4 and negative 36. That turning point is called a local maximum because it's the highest in that area. Obviously, that goes higher, but it's a turning point, the local max. There's my local minimum. Okay, we have to label everything, the intercepts with the axes and the turning points. Okay, because you are given graph paper sometimes or not, you have to just be clear and label things nicely. Then, the slightly new work is this point of inflection. Right, to find the point of inflection, we make the second derivative equal to naught. The second derivative is then 6x minus 10. I solve for x and I get x of 5 over 3. I sub 5 over 3 back into the original function and I get negative 10,59. So my point of inflection is... 5 over 3 and negative 10,59, which roughly sits over there, POR. It is exactly halfway between my two turning points. My turning point x value there is 4. My turning point x value is negative 2 over 3. So halfway is my point of inflection. Remember, my point of inflection tells us where the concavity of the graph is changing. In other words, where the tangents of the graph change from being concave up to concave down. Okay, I'm just going to... Go like this. Watch here. All the tangents to my graph are all lying above my graph, above my graph, above my graph. But at this point of my point inflection, the tangents now appear below my graph, below my graph. Okay. So at this point, we say that the graph is concave down because it's beneath the tangents. Then at the point of inflection, it flips and the graphs the graph is then concave up. It lies above all my tangents. Okay, so hopefully that little discussion of this task uh, assists you and will help you with the rest. Okay, good luck, Matrix. You got this.